Hi, my name is Josh Gottry. Welcome to today's weekly lesson. Today we're going to be looking at the four mallet traditional grip. This is not, of course, related to the snare drum traditional grip with a stick uh, on the side um, used for uh, rudimental drumming, uh, but is a grip for four mallet keyboard percussion. Um, this grip is certainly historically significant, hence the name traditional. Um, and it is used extensively around the world, particularly in Europe and uh, Asia. Uh, although it is uh, very possibly one of the least common four mallet grips um, in America uh, behind uh, Burton grip, commonly used for vibraphone and jazz playing, and Stevens grip. Uh, or independent muster Stevens grip, however you want to refer to it, um, often used for classical four mallet um, marimba playing. Uh, but we're going to look at it nonetheless because it certainly is a significant four mallet group that, uh, grip that's used by uh, thousands of, of uh, percussionists, uh, marimba players uh, around the world, uh, and is, is worth uh, consideration possibly for your use as well. So the traditional grip, like Burton grip, is a cross grip, which means the shafts of the mallets do cross in the hands. Um, unlike the Burton grip, um, for traditional grip, the inside mallet crosses over the outside mallet. Uh, if you know Burton grip or at all, or watch my other video for that, um, you know that for the Burton grip, the outside mallet crosses over the inside. Uh, so in this case, we're dealing with inside mallet over outside mallet. So we'll start there. I'm going to go ahead and use my right hand. I've got my inside mallet crossed over my outside mallet. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my thumb and first finger in the triangle or V shape that is formed by those two mallets. And then the rest of my fingers I'm going to wrap around. And so there's the start of your grip. I've got my thumb and first finger here in the middle of that V and the rest of my three fingers wrapped around the mallets. And here we have essentially like a fourth or a fifth interval on the keyboard between the two mallets. Okay, as the mallet, as the interval gets closer, I'm going to use those back fingers to squeeze the mallets closer together and then just kind of tuck my thumb in under my index finger or the vicinity of my index finger because I want to make sure that it stays still in that V, allowing me to open the mallets quickly as needed for the interval change. So this brings us down to a second, and we have still that first finger, the index finger and thumb in that V, the rest of the fingers wrapped around. As the interval gets larger, that thumb and first finger are going to press out. We're pressing the inside of the thumb right by the thumbnail, and the inside of the first finger, index finger, right around that first knuckle. As that, as that interval gets wider, you're going to see that I'm starting to release those back fingers such that when I get out to the widest interval of an octave or something like that, the only finger that's holding that X, that cross, is my pinky finger. That's the only one that's holding those mallets together. Um, and the rest of the fingers have just settled on that outside mallet. And that gets me out very easily to an octave spacing. Okay, and then as I need to get closer, I will go ahead and release some of that pressure that I'm pushing with my thumb and my index finger. Go ahead and use those other fingers to grip the mallet together again and close that interval tight back up to the second or whatever interval that I need. Okay, um, This grip should not be held tightly or firmly. It should be very relaxed and loose. One of the nice things about this grip is it does feel like each mallet, even though they're crossed, can be uh, played and used with a, a great degree of nuance and touch to get a variety of, of volumes and articulation even though they're crossed in the hand. So that's one of the things that makes this a, a very nice grip. But at the same time, you have the full hand behind the weight of the mallet. Um, so you have a, a good range of power that's available as well in addition to that nuance and shape. So we've got that right hand. I'm gonna go ahead and take my left hand. I've got the inside mallet crossed over the outside. Go ahead and set the thumb and first finger inside. Rest the fingers wrap around. If I need to go wider, I just release those fingers. As I need to get smaller, I'm going to go ahead and wrap those back up. And again, still trying to keep that thumb inside the mallet so that I'm able to do that. We don't want to wrap it outside because then I have a second motion to get that finger back inside to open the intervals again as necessary. One of the biggest uh, 
proponents and advocates um, in the United States for this grip uh, is Nancy Zeltzman. Um, and she does have a book entitled Four Mallet Marimba Plain that I would recommend, uh, both if you're considering studying this grip, uh, because it does have a very detailed um, description of all the nuances of holding and executing the grip in performance. Um, not too uh, unlike uh, Lee Stevens' book, Method of Movement, and its uh, detailing of the Stevens grip uh, in his text. Uh, uh, Nancy Zeltzman very carefully details the, the nuances and specifics of traditional grip in her book, For Mallet Marimba Playing. But additionally to that, there's some great exercises and etudes and excerpts included in this book that are, are uh, great for study, you, regardless of what um, uh, grip you use for form out playing on marimba. So certainly highly recommend that book and can uh, uh, suggest you consider that specifically if you're looking um, at traditional grip for form out playing. Uh, but beyond that, it would be a valuable resource to have on your shelf just for the study of marimba and form out playing in general. So there's a quick uh, summary of the traditional form out grip. Hope that helps and uh, have a great week.